Welcome to PC Games Nostalgia, where we talk about yesterday's PC games today. My name is Jimmy Wilhelmsson, and I will be your host for the next 20 minutes or so. The title we're going to probe into today is... Each time we bring a guest into our digital studio and today's honored guest is Mr. Martin Walfisch, the founder of Massive Entertainment. Uh, welcome Mr. Walfisch, may I call you Martin? Absolutely, nice to be here. Uh, you were, like I said, the founder of Massive Entertainment, which is a pretty large industry in, in Sweden, in Malmo, where we sit actually, and uh, it's now it now belongs to Ubisoft. Uh, could you just tell us the brief and exciting story about how Massive came to be, even though it's like many years ago? Well, how, br how brief do you want it? We can spend a few hours on this. <laughs> let, me t let, me, let me ask you like this. I know that you skipped university to found your gaming studio. Is that right? Well, sort of. No, I, I actually went through university as a, as a software engineering student and I skipped my master thesis. I didn't really have time to finish my master, th master thesis Okay. Uh, so because I found it massive instead. Is that an advice you want to give today's youngsters? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out for you. It did. And, and I mean, what, what advice can I give? In, in some ways, it, it's a cliche, but just follow your heart or follow your passions. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what's going to take you somewhere. Speaking about founding uh, uh, game uh, studios, did you, uh, about giving them names, did you give it the name Massive right from the beginning or did it have a, a, a cheesier or, or, or bad, bad <laughs> worse name uh, in the beginning? A cheesier name. Really? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, initially the name for the company, before it even was a company, we called it Sparks with an X at the end. Sparks. Um, and that sort of was a working title that, that we called it for a few months. Now, this is back in, in the fall of 96. Um, then we, when we founded a company and, and made it a real sort of legal entity, it was called Nova Storm. Really? Um, yes. And it, it was a name that uh, I came up with and I thought it sounded really, really cool. So we, we named the company that. And then sort of just, I, as I remember it, it was just a few weeks into actually having the company up and running. And it was like, Nova Storm, it, it sounds like a neo-Nazi group or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it sort of didn't feel right. And then about a year later, I guess late 97 or early 98, uh, I woke up one morning or maybe I was lying in the bath actually. And I just uh, sort of thought, okay, massive entertainment. That is what, what we should call this. And then we changed name. Okay. And your big claim to fame was ground control, right? Yes, that was the first big game that we created and launched in the, in the summer of 2000. Right. And nowadays, the studio, you're not the head of it anymore, and uh, the studio is owned by Ubisoft today. Yes, correct. Okay. So what did you do? What are you doing today? Well, I'm, I mean, I've been a game developer for more, more than 20 years, and I, I still feel like a game developer in, in many ways, and I'm an entrepreneur. I love to start companies. So, so after Massive, I found another games company that, that wasn't as successful. We struggled with it for six, seven years. And then about four years ago, I was approached by Egmont Nordisk Film, which is one of the big uh, Nordic media conglomerates. Uh, and they had some ideas about starting to invest into game studios. So you're not that into creating games anymore. You're more like helping others, youngsters, to create games. Yes, well, not not only youngsters. Some of some of the studios and the developers are are also old, like me, in their forties or so. There's hope. Uh, but Older yeah, that's like that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's what I do a, a bit of my time. Speaking about old, Martin, the game yes. title we're going to talk about today and be nostalgic about is Diablo.
Every guest can choose their own game. Why did you choose Diablo out of all games? Well, Diablo is a game that I remember very fondly. I mean, it was released uh, late, late 96, and uh, I started playing it more or less immediately after it was released. So uh, a lot of the time, sort of my final um, time at, at uh, as, a, as a student uh, and also during the time I, I sort of fired up Massive, uh, Diablo was very much my go-to game. It was the game I played absolutely the most during those times. So I have very fond memories of that. Just in case, I guess everybody here knows Diablo, but just in case somebody doesn't know Diablo, what is Diablo and what made it special back in 1996, according to you? Well, it's an RPG, a role-playing game, but it, it's an action RPG or hack and slash RPG. So it's very much focused on, on the sort of action elements and always having something to do. Uh, it, it has a, a great story in many ways, but it's not really story focused, I would say. It's more about sort of the immediate uh, satisfaction of killing monsters <laughs> and, and finding gear, finding loot. That's, uh, that's a key thing in Diablo. Are you an RPG fan? I mean, did you also play uh, role-playing games pen and paper wise, like Dungeons and Dragons or the other maybe Swedish uh, equivalent? Yeah, I did uh, to some extent in in the 80s and early 90s, but I never really uh, I never really played them much. I think uh, in in my group of friends, we didn't really have anyone who was the perfect uh, what's it called dungeon master or so. Right. So I, I tried being the dungeon master and some of my friends, but we never really got the game sessions going as much. So yeah, yeah, I I, I sort of. Uh, think of myself as a pen and paper role, role player at, at a time, but no, I'm, I very quickly sort of move, more moved into the computer uh, supported uh, RPGs. Right, where the AI can be the game master, so to speak. Exactly. exactly. Uh, you mentioned that it was live action or real time. Um, wasn't that the thing? I mean, role playing games, uh, uh, computer uh, RPGs, they were mostly turn based. I remember the old SSI games, Dungeons and Dragons yes. based, like uh, Champions of Crin or Pool of Radiance, and uh, uh, all of these games. Uh, and just a few years later, uh, real time role, uh, role playing games became a big thing. Was Diablo kind of the first live action or real time game, or was it like the, the first big success? Uh, it's that's a good question. It, I mean, it was the first big success for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had played the sort of turn-based RPGs uh, a bit, but they were they were just a bit too slow for me. So when Diablo came, it was so refreshing to have this uh, yeah real-time action RPG. Um, that was fantastic for me. What you do really is, I also play Diablo a lot. What you do is you you use the mouse, of course, like like you did with the uh, the, the turn-based games. But you click where you want to go, and then you click when you want to hit something. So it's a lot of, uh, I mean, you're just sitting there tapping the button like crazy, which you didn't do uh, earlier. And I guess for, yes. for younger gamers, that is, the, that is what you do today. They're used to that. But that was not, I mean, I bet you, you broke a lot of, uh, a lot of equipment, uh, your mouse, uh, left mouse button ah. or whatever, <laughs> probably. Yeah, that's a good question. I, yeah. But yeah, it, there was a lot of APF, action per frame, in Diablo, definitely. So let me ask you, did you ever finish Diablo? Did you break it? Well, I mean, Diablo, the first one, um, as I recall, I think it had 15 levels, 15 sort of dungeons you were going down. Uh, so in, in some ways, it was a short game. Uh, it, it took, yeah, I don't remember how many hours, but it wasn't like it took many tens of hours. But it had a lot of replayability. Uh, so yeah, I finished sort of and, and killed Diablo on, on the lowest level many times. Diablo is, is Spanish for the devil, I guess. Uh, that is the main villain in the game. That's the last uh, demonic boss you're supposed to uh, kill, right? Yes. That's the story. You said it had a great story. I don't know if I follow you there. I think it had it's a pretty bland story. He, he's, he's somehow imprisoned uh, beneath a monastery or something, and then yes. he has corrupted a few kings and archbishops or whatever. And of course, those people are his uh, middle bosses, and so to speak. Yes, so. yes that's a great story. What, uh, what are you complaining about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you said... Um, one other thing that I think is interesting is that 
the game is procedure. It has procedural uh, mazes. Uh, yes. Like, what does that mean? Computer generated mazes. You, you're a game uh, developer. Could you elaborate a little on that? Yes. So, so basically, like I said, the, the game had you, you were sort of going down level one, level two, level three, down to level 15. And each time you came to a new level, it was what is called procedurally generated. So it looked different every time uh, you got to that level. So you, you never knew as a, as a player, you never knew how it was going to look. Uh, and that added a lot to the replay, replayability um, of the game as such, because every time it was a fresh experience. So out of a game developer perspective, uh, you didn't have game level designers creating great levels. You had game level designers creating great AI or, or um, procedural algorithms. Is that what you're yes. saying? Okay. Yes, exactly. And so, I mean, the, the levels had different elements that then were that they were then were pieced together by an AI, really. Um, in different ways each time uh, but yeah so it wasn't sort of it, 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 in the development of diablo they didn't have sort of traditional level designers as such i think it was very much a collaboration by the with the programmers and some um, some designers to figure out how to design the algorithms creating the, the procedural levels and when you look at that today, I don't know back then because you were very young and you were you didn't you hadn't even made your first game, I guess. But when you look at, at the, uh, that thing today, the procedurally uh, generated dungeons, are you able to see how they how they uh, thought? I mean, are you, are you able to see? Oh, there's that thing, and there's that thing, and that thing is coming back, and blah blah blah, like that. Do you understand my question? Absolutely. I mean, it 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 was in some ways very crude. It's not like every level every time was amazing right uh, so but it, it and i mean in in the end you did more or less the same thing on on each level i mean some of the levels had introduced sort of new types of enemies and new, new types of loot um but in essence it, it was like you said the maze that was different so you you didn't know what was going to be around the next corner because every time it was different but in essence it, it was very much the same experience uh, right such. You mentioned loot. Uh, the, the Diablo is known for its, um, how should I say, vast amount of weapons and, and, and loot. Uh, they were also created procedurally, or? That I don't know. I, well, I I'm, I'm think it's a mix, uh, or I would say I'm sure it's a mix. Uh, some of the loot, some of the gear, especially the better stuff, is... Uh, is sort of manually put into the game and manu I'm sure it's manually designed to sort of have the right balance. And then uh, probably they created some gear on the fly. I don't know if they did it sort of during gameplay or if they just had big lists they had created during game development. But uh, yeah, there. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of different weapons and gear. So it, everything wasn't created by design, I'm sure. There are many aspects to, to Diablo that for me, as a becoming a game designer, um, after I played Diablo, had it had a lot of influence. Okay, so please tell us what about the game design that influenced you, and maybe even some uh, massive games. Yeah, I mean there are many aspects to Diablo that, for me, especially when I look back at it, are, are quite amazing. One thing that is something I brought with me as a game designer throughout the years is is what I call the twenty minute experience or a 20 minute session diablo was i don't know if it was intentionally designed i think it was but it was very much a game where you could sit down for 20 minutes and get something out of it uh, either you reach a new level with your character or you found some interesting loot um, and then you could stop playing and then come back the next day or you could sort of continue and then you knew you had about another 20 minutes uh, of, of playing until something really fun happened again um, so it, it gave you, as a player, it gave you freedom to leave at any time, but that also meant that you could just never leave. <laughs> I just played 20 minutes after 20 minutes after 20 minutes, and sometimes I was sort of realizing it's in the middle of the night and I'm still playing this game, and I played maybe 20 20-minute 20 sessions in, in a row. 
or so. That's interesting because that's a game component that is valid still today. I mean, that's the way game developers want you to play. Uh, maybe not even 20 minutes, but if you have like two minutes left uh, exactly. between buses or between trains or whatever, you bring up your phone and you start playing. But that was uh, maybe Diablo, an early example of. It, it definitely was. And like you say, I mean, so nowadays game designers, I think, think very carefully about what's what's the ses session length that's very much a sort of part of the game design toolbox and like you said mobile games some some are all, sort of have a few second session length and some have some have a few minutes but i mean back in those days the the 20 minute experience was was i would say not very common most games were you typically had to play for much longer i mean world of warcraft also from blizzard it, it came a few years later of course but in the, initially if you didn't spend at least two hours in World of Warcraft, you didn't really ha had that much fun. I think they've they've shortened the sessions now in in the current versions, but the the original World of Warcraft was two hours, or you shouldn't even start. Another thing that I can mention that that really looking back at it, I think Diablo in some ways already perfected back back then, was the sort of small challenge, small reward, big challenge, big reward. Um, I think that is something that uh, I really brought with me. That as a as a game designer, that's how you have to think. You always give the players different challenges. They have to do something, overcome something. And if they do something simple, they should get a reward for it. That's part of the game experience. But it should be a small reward. And obviously, if they kill a boss, that's the big reward. And uh, that is very much something that Diablo was fantastic at doing. Very very impressive looking back at it. I think that also Diablo, as I see it now, I didn't see it back then, was one of the first games that added uh, what we today call instant gratification. Um, there were so yes. many weapons, so much loot, that you, you, you practically knew that even, I, even if I have a good staff or a good shield or whatever right now, there will be a better one around the corner, right? It's in some ways it's like a slot machine. I mean, it, it every time you killed a monster, there was a pretty good chance that it dropped something or even several different uh, loot or gear or weapons, coins, whatever. So uh, uh, yes, it definitely sort of caters to that psychology of doing something simple, and you get and you have a chance of getting something exciting. And then obviously you, you had to kill a thousand monsters before you found the really exciting stuff. But that was just uh, part of the fun. Yeah. Diablo also came at a time where multiplayer was getting uh, popular, mainly because this is the kind of the birth of internet. I mean, 1996, most people had not maybe connected themselves, but they had at least thought about it. Many, many millions of, of Swedes, at least, were connected to the internet. Uh, did you also play Diablo uh, multiplayer style? Yes, yes, very, very much so. That's actually one of the reasons why I rem remember it so fondly. Because we, I was living in in a student housing, so we were there were about each house had about twenty small uh, student apartments, and I think there were four houses really next to each other, just a, a small lawn in between each house. Uh, and I, I don't know how many people we were playing Diablo at that time, but we had basically lawn cables. We we didn't have internet in the same way. I think we had just no, it, it I think it predates the time when we got fiber into those uh, student uh, houses. But basically we had lawn cables going through the windows to the next house and then to the next house. And so everyone could play together. And whenever you jumped into the game, ba basically at any time of, of day and night, someone else was playing and you can just join up. So the, the multiplayer aspect of Diablo was very impressive and so much fun. Is Diablo still great today? I mean, you mean Diablo 1, the original game? I that mean Diablo 1, about? sure. There have been yeah. several. I mean, can you still, let, let, let me rephrase. Can you still fire up Diablo? Do you still fire up Diablo and feel this is a pretty great game? I could still play it. Maybe only for nostalgic reasons, but, but still. Or do you just get bored and see, nah? Uh, I haven't played it in, yeah, probably 20 years. Uh, I think. Uh, I, I would think that my memory of Diablo is probably better than the game itself right now. Okay. Uh, it it was fantastic back in the days, but I think uh, for me, being now used to sort of more modern games, I think it would just feel old. 
unfortunately. But but it's it's an interesting interesting question. Maybe I should fire it up uh, one of these days and, and see what I think. I'll get back to you on that. Are there any special moments? You know, any special situations uh, within the game that you remember as as particularly uh, uh, funny? I mean, uh, sometimes you end up in in certain situations that, since it's procedural, it could be uh, something that most people do not even see. Do you remember any such uh, anecdotes or memories? I mean, I the the, the number one is the the thing I. I think everyone remembers who, who played Diablo back in the days. It's it's uh, an enemy, a monster called the Butcher. Bastard led us into a trap. Now everyone is dead, killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Avenge us! Which I think you encounter level two or level three, so quite early in the game. And it's just so well done and sort of the, the mood is so well uh, paced uh, on that level and then suddenly the butcher comes and it's not fun it's scary <laughs> and uh, you have to figure out how to kill the butcher right um, so that's that's absolutely the first time I, I met the butcher i still remember that i was just scared and i had no idea what to do and i was just running around this maze and the butcher was chasing me so i don't think i managed to kill him the first time i i, I think i had to try a few times Martin, I would like to thank you so much for having you here. Uh, I hope you will uh, succeed in any endeavors that you are uh, going through with uh, Nordisk Film. And uh, I think you should totally fire up Diablo and start playing. <laughs> I think your nostalgic memory will conquer your, um, your uh, how should I say, modern day pessimism and reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Take care. Bye.